Hey, good afternoon, Delhi. Uh, apologies about the delay. There were some technical issues, as it always happens in conferences. So uh, we are here to talk about how a Kubernetes scheduler works. And uh, I am Mahindra. She is my colleague, Himani. Both of us work for Gojek. Most of you would have heard about Gojek, but just a quick intro. We are one of the first Decacons of Indonesia. And we are into ride hailing, payments, food delivery, and a whole bunch of utilitarian services. So rather than talking about Gojek, let's actually dig into how a Kubernetes scheduler actually works. So we'll basically be covering these five topics at a high level. We'll talk about scheduling in Kubernetes, its use cases, how it works. We'll give a short demo, and we'll briefly cover what is new in scheduler. So scheduling is something that's not new to the computer science community. Like probably most of us would have heard about scheduling the first time we studied computer science, uh, about the CPU scheduling. Um, in Kubernetes, it's something similar, although a bit different. So when it comes to Kubernetes, scheduling is basically figuring out how a pod is matched to a node so that they, the kubelet can actually start the pod and run it on the node. So that is what we'll be focusing on for this half an hour. Uh, just high-level use cases about what we can achieve through the scheduler. So one thing is that we can ensure that the pods get the required resources. So for example, there are certain pods which would have memory requirements, or it might need a certain volume to be mounted. Or you, know, you might have some machine learning workloads which needs GPU, for example. So you can specify all these things uh, through scheduler. You can prioritize workloads. So say, for example, you have two services, A and B. Um, and your service A is of a higher priority. Now what happens if your cluster is running out of resources? The pods of service B will automatically get terminated, some of them. And the pods for service A will get uh, started, or it would auto-scale based on your settings. So you can do workload prioritization. You can configure geographical distance. Again, let's go back to service A and B. Now say, for example, these two services, they talk very often. And if service A is deployed in, say, US zone, service B is somewhere in EU, the round trip latency would be very high. So you might want service A and B both deployed in a particular zone, which are like, geographically nearer. You can do that. You can reserve nodes for specific pods. Uh, so again, coming back to the machine learning example, like you want only machine learning workload to run on GPU-enabled nodes. So you can do all these things through scheduler and much more. So what exactly does the scheduler need to run? So number one, it has to know whenever a new pod has come up. OK. Uh, next, it has to figure out that, OK, there are so many nodes. Out of all these nodes, which one is the best node on which my pod can run? So it has to figure that thing out. And finally, once it has figured it out, it has to assign the pod to the node. So we'll go into each of these things, like how these things work. So starting with number one, uh, Kubernetes, uh, sorry, scheduler is nothing but a Kubernetes controller. So in the background, the scheduler is constantly running. And it is listening to this event called pod creation. So every time a pod is created, the scheduler gets notified that, hey, there is a new pod. And that is how scheduler gets to know that, OK, this is something that I need to schedule on a node. The next thing it has to figure out, which is the right node. So this is a two-phase process. Part one is filtering. Uh, and part two is scoring. So what happens in filtering is that uh, your pods would have certain requirements about uh, be it memory, be it CPU, volumes, and whatnot. So the scheduler has to analyze each node, whether it meets the requirements or not. If it doesn't meet the requirement, the node is filtered out. If it meets the requirement, it is filtered in. So this is a very simple cluster that you see on the screen. In one single geographical zone, there are six nodes. And whenever it has to schedule a pod, it would loop through each of these things in a linear fashion. So this is the pod manifest. A new pod has been created. OK, so to look at pod number one, uh, sorry, node number one. If it meets the requirements, great. It's filtered in. Otherwise, it's filtered out. Now, in most cases, like in most production workloads, your cluster would be across multiple geographical zones and not in the same zone. So for the sake of example, let's say there are two zones. There is Winterfell in the north, King's Landing somewhere in the center. And in this setting, we have six nodes in Winterfell, four nodes in King's Landing. So the scheduler, it tries to balance out between these geographical zones when it's doing the filtering. So it would go one by one. First, it would look at Winterfell, one node in Winterfell, one node in King's Landing, one node in Winterfell, King's Landing, and so on. So for a particular pod, it will look at node number one. 
Does it match the criteria? Are the fit predicates matching? Yes. Filter in. It moves on to node number 7 in King's Landing. Are the fit predicates matching? No. Move on to node number 2. Matching? Yes. Move on to node number 8. Matching? Yes. Node number 3. So it goes on and on like this. But how long will it go on like this? So say for example if you have a large cluster, if it's a thousand node cluster, every time a pod has to be scheduled, the scheduler can actually go through all the nodes, but then that would be time consuming. So there is a setting in Kubernetes scheduler called percentage of nodes to score. Now by default, this is set as 40%. So in our 10 node cluster, it will look at four nodes. And once those four nodes are filtered in, it would stop the process. And it would figure out which of these four nodes is the best fit for scheduling. So in our case, we have four nodes, one, two, three, and eight. So the process of analyzing the nodes will stop here. The next part is scoring. So there are four nodes. All these four nodes can match the criteria. Pod can be scheduled on any one of these. But we have to shortlist any one particular node. So this is where the scoring comes in. It looks at a bunch of different functions. And it actually has a score. So over here, you can see like node 1 is the least scored node. Node 8 is the highest scored node. So the pod will be scheduled on node 8. And finally, now that the scheduler has decided that, OK, my new pod is supposed to go to node 8, it has to assign it. For that, it creates something called binding object. And uh, if you look at this uh, flow diagram, you can see that once the pod is created, the create pod event scheduler watches, it figures out that, OK, this node is there on which I have to schedule. So it creates a binding on the API server. And the kubelet is actually watching this create bind event. And as soon as that event is triggered, it would actually go, the kubelet would go and create the pod on the right node. So let's take, off, uh, let's take a look at the let's take a look at few features of uh, scheduler. So over to Himani. demo, we have created a Kubernetes cluster with two nodes. And uh, the version of this cluster is version 1.16, as you can see here. And it has two nodes, one named Lannister and Stark. So we are using here the Game of Thrones analogy. And going by that, the nodes represent the Game of Thrones house, and the characters uh, would be representing the pods. So going forward, so here, uh, first we have a deployment called uh, net. The deployment net has name metadata, and the match label is character net. The replica of this uh, deployment would be one. Similarly, we have one more uh, deployment called uh, Cersei, uh, which has uh, match label character Cersei and replica one. Now let's uh, apply both of these deployment manifests and see how the pods are being uh, deployed. So here, uh, net deployment and Cersei deployment uh, are applied on this uh, cluster. And uh, we can see that Cersei uh, pod is uh, currently uh, deploy uh, scheduled on Stark node, whereas the net pod is currently scheduled on the Lannister node. Clearly, Cersei uh, belongs to the Lannister house. So we would like to change this. Let's see how we can achieve this. So in order to achieve this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label our nodes currently. Uh, so the label that I'm adding is house, uh, and the value would be as per the house value. So here the Stark node is house equal to Stark, and the label uh, for Lannister node would be house equal to Lannister. Now let's see how we can utilize this uh, and uh, enforce that Cersei uh, pods are scheduled only on Lannister nodes. So I'm using here something called node selector, and the value uh, key value that we're using here is house Lannister. So whenever the scheduler gets this pod, uh, the job to uh, schedule this pod, it will check uh, what all nodes are present which satisfy this house uh, Lannister. And accordingly, it will schedule the pods. So let's apply this and see where uh, the Cersei pods are being deployed. So here we can see the first uh, pod of Cersei, which was deployed on Stark, is currently terminating. And the second one, which is 11 seconds ago, is scheduled on Lannister node. So using node selector, we can have a 
hard requirement that this uh, requirement needs to be fulfilled only then the pod would be scheduled now let's see if i create a new deployment called john where i want this uh, node uh, where i want this deployment john to be deployed on house targaryen currently we have only two uh, worker nodes in our uh, cluster which is one is labeled as stark node and the another one is labeled as the uh, lannister node so on applying this john deployment let's see where uh, is this going to be uh, scheduled so we say uh, we see here john is currently in pending state and let's figure out what is the reason for uh, it to be in pending state by doing a describe on the spot so here we uh, see at the end it says uh, failed scheduling zero out of two nodes are available but any of the node selector didn't match so node selector is a hard uh, requirement if the requirement is not met uh, the pod is not scheduled let's uh, see if we want to uh, see a case where we want our pods to be preferably deployed on uh, or preferably satisfy some requirements but if those requirements are not satisfied we would rather prefer it to be scheduled somewhere else uh, unless apart from being uh, in pending state so here i am creating a new uh, deployment called sansa for sansa uh, i am creating two replicas and here we are using uh, spec affinity and here we are defining pod affinity as preferred during scheduling and the match preference here would be key house and the value is lannister so let's apply this sansa uh, deployment and see where uh, it gets deployed so the sansa pod is current uh, one of it is deployed on the lannister uh, node and one of it is deployed on the stark node so it depends on the resource use uh, usage and the other uh, fit predicates which uh, mahendra talked about earlier depending on that the sansa node has been deployed so this is uh, uh, provides a soft requirement uh, whereas the node selector was providing a hard requirement now Uh, let's see if i want uh, a certain uh, particular kind of workload to be to be deployed closer to uh, another set of how can i achieve that so to achieve that uh, first i am adding a new node to a cluster called targaryen uh, node and i am labeling this targaryen node with house equal to targaryen we can see here what all uh, labels it has added so lannister has house lannister stark has stark and targaryen has house targaryen value moving forward let's see how uh, the i'm creating a new deployment now called dani deployment how does this look like so here the dani deploy uh, has character dani value set and uh, the replicas would be two and here we are saying no definity here uh, for dani is required during scheduling which is a hard requirement again uh that it should belong uh, be scheduled on nodes which fulfill house uh, equal to targaryen value let's deploy this uh apply this changes so we see dani has been uh, scheduled on targaryen nodes now uh we have sir jora and we want him to be he always prefers to be somewhere closer to dani how uh, we can do this so for this uh, there is a new deployment with replicas of 3 and uh, here instead of using no definity we are using pod definity which basically means uh, it would have a likeness towards the pod instead of the node as we uh, have seen earlier so here the character value is uh, character value we have set as dani uh, let's apply this manifest so here we are seeing that sarjora uh, pods are deployed on the targaryen on which the uh dani uh, no dani pods was scheduled so using node selector uh, node affinity and pod affinity we can control or we uh, can specify how we want our pods to be scheduled on which worker nodes moving forward let's say if we want uh, our nodes to decide what kind of workload they want to be scheduled on themselves so for this we have something called taints and tolerance uh here i am creating a new taint on house targaryen which says white walker equal to behind the wall and no schedule so the key is white walker and no schedule means if 
does not have a toleration for this kind of pain, the pod would not be scheduled on this uh, node. So here, uh, I'm creating a simple uh, white walker uh, deployment, which has character white walker, replicas are three. Uh, let's apply this manifest. So here, uh, we see that the white walker uh, pods are scheduled on Lannister and Stark nodes. It is not scheduled on the Targaryen nodes because it doesn't have a toleration for the taint we applied earlier. Now let's say if I add a taint um, for uh, execution. By this I mean that currently we are, have seen how we can decide the schedule would be controlled. But now let's say if I want uh, later on when a pod is already scheduled, we don't want it, we still want it to follow some sort of uh, affinity or labels, how we can do that. So for this, uh, I'm creating a taint on house uh, uh, Lannister and Stark nodes. That is, white walker behind the wall, no execute. And let's see what this taint does. So we see here, uh, white walker pods, there are three in terminating state, which were uh, earlier deployed. And the rest of the three are in pending state. So now all of our three nodes have three taints. One has no schedule and the other has no execute. Now let's see the reason behind why uh, our, one of our white walker pods is in pending state. So it says that the scheduling failed because three nodes had taints that the pod didn't tolerate. Now let's try add a toleration for one of these pods and see uh, how it would behave. So for doing that, I'm adding toleration for a uh, white walker exists no schedule, which basically means even if a node has a taint regarding uh, this, the pod will tolerate it and the node will allow the pod to be deployed. Also, I'm adding a uh, toleration for white walker exist no execute and let's apply this. So we uh, see here, also I increase the number of replicas for the sake of uh, demo to five here. And we say white walker pods uh, are scheduled at Stark, Lannister, Targaryen nodes. So this is the uh, demo. I showcase how we can use pod affinity and uh, taints and tolerance to decide where the we want the pods to be deployed. Uh, moving forward. Okay, so what else is uh, new in uh, Kubernetes uh, scheduler or what else could Kubernetes scheduler do? So the Kubernetes scheduler is quite extensible. Uh, we have a link here which gives more detailed uh, extensibility features that you can do use. If uh, you have more customizations and uh, the extensibility features of uh, Cube scheduler are not sufficient, you could probably write your own Cube scheduler. And uh, in the pod manifest, we can specify what scheduler do we want to use for the pod to be scheduled. Coming uh, further, we have even pod spreading. So let's say we have two zones, and uh, we would want our pods to be deployed uh, or scheduled on both the uh, zones so that even if one zone goes down, the traffic is still serving. Then we have a scheduling framework, which is in uh, alpha state in V115. Uh, and uh, because uh, schedule is a very vast uh, project in itself in Kubernetes right now, six uh, scheduling is working towards uh, creating a scheduling framework which would provide more customizations uh, for the users to decide how they want the scheduling to be done. And it also, uh, both the scheduling and the binding uh, have been decoupled. Now moving forward, we have batch scheduling. Currently, only one pod could be scheduled at a time, but using batch scheduling, multiple pods could be scheduled uh, in one go. These are the references uh, that we used uh, for this uh, talk. And if uh, you are interested uh, in knowing more about the uh, scheduling, and uh, you can join a Slack scheduling channel, you can check out the GitHub repo and uh, maybe join the mailing list. Uh, that's it, guys. Thank you for listening to us.